Mr. Bigley. Hey there, guys and gals, it's Grabeagly with another episode of Gaming with Grabeagly, and I'm once again playing the game Katua Shoujo. Now, last episode, uh, Misha and Shizune tried to trick me into joining the student council, uh, and then I told them I didn't want to, and apparently now we're going to the student council room to play a game of Risk completely innocently, according to them. And that's pretty much all that happened, so let's go ahead and continue. During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Oh yeah, that's right. Also, the girl with the long hair and the burn on her face, she um, like comes in and out of class, and it seems like nobody notices at all except for the protagonist. So it's kind of weird because uh, she's just sort of like a moot point at this uh, point in the game. But hopefully we find out more. I'm assuming we'll find out more because, once again, a whole bunch of you have been like, Hey, she's a very important character. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. Oh, here they are again. After school, Shizune and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. <laughs> I feel a little offended, but I'd been considering it. Nevertheless, I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. <laughs> What's with the escort? <laughs> this doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to his cell. Wah! <laughs> What's wrong, Hee-chan? <laughs> That's right. We're just going to go play a game of Risk, remember? I don't know, Misha. This all seems a little sinister to me. I start thinking that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torture me until I agree to join the student council. <laughs> well, that's highly unlikely, but still, for some reason it just seems like it would be so plausible. They are pretty, uh, conniving, so who knows. Getting to the student council room is as simple as turning two corners from where we started. What? That's it? This makes you guys being uh, so on top of me seem a little silly. Oh. That's not true, Hee-chan. Shi-chan says that when their life is threatened, people have shown the capacity to pull off superhuman bursts of speed. <laughs> life is threatened? Her expression, her expression unchanging, Misha signs something amusedly to Shizune, who makes a baffling face and puts her hands behind her back, looking pleased with herself. She's like a freaking uh, sadist or something, Shizune is. <laughs> Misha feigns defensiveness and hums cheerily. Stop that. I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. Shizune opens the door to the student council room. It's a very plain, sparsely decorated room, although it is quite large, maybe even a little larger than a classroom. There's a big table in the center surrounded by chairs and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back that I assume is Shizune's. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras, perhaps? Aside from the tables and chairs, the room doesn't have much else to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves stacked with old school records and documents. Not much else. In fact, nothing else yeah I, I really like the descriptions in this game the writing is so good that like the descriptions of the room it really is like reading a book and being able to envision things i mean obviously the little uh the backdrops and the art on the screen help out a lot but uh the descriptions by themselves are really well done and if i was just reading this without looking at it i would be able to imagine uh all the characters all the environments things like that it's it's really very well done so you know once again bravo to the people who made this this is a pretty bleak room they could at least put a potted plant in here or something but the most notable noticeable thing that this room doesn't have is other people are we early uh oh they probably it's probably just the two of them no <laughs> what do you mean no does it mean that nobody else is coming today <laughs> yeah that's right before I manage to ask why that's the case, Shizune claps her hands together very energetically. <laughs> Hee-chan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. Ha 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 ha, okay, okay, okay. Do you want to know the rules? We can explain to you while we set everything up. <laughs> while Misha's talking, Shizune takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on the table. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. It is interesting. It's a really fun game. I freaking love Risk. It's awesome. Although it does ruin friendships sometimes. <laughs> but a lot of don't a lot of board games do that? Like Monopoly definitely does that, and like Sorry, and a whole bunch of other board games definitely. I've gotten into like shouting matches with friends over them when I was like a kid. <laughs> After Misha spends a little too long for her liking, 
running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, Shizune cuts in and declares the game has started with a decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when I agreed to this. <laughs> you gotta be aggressive in Risk. You gotta destroy everybody. Halfway into the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. Hee-chan, Shi-chan wants you to know that you are taking too long to make a move. <laughs> Shi-chan also says that she will let you keep Australia if you agree to join the student council. But Australia sucks! You don't know Australia! Australia is the worst. <laughs> I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no! <laughs> Shi-chan admires your fighting spirit- er, Shi-chan admires your fighting spirit and would be a benevolent dictator who would spare your people if you agree to join the student council. <laughs> <laughs> You're so competitive, Shizune. <laughs> she seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little more magnanimous. Magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know what that word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index fingers together, or against her temples, as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the place, or by the pace of her heated signing. Uh, wait, please slow down, Shi-chan. Um, Shi-chan, Shi-chan says you're going to lose. <laughs> Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Uh, okay. <laughs> Those eyes of her shine with childlike mischief. She says you have no chance if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. She has a point, attack aggressively, or it's a tra it's a trap. It's smarter to, defend to play defensively here. No way, you want to attack. I'm going to attack super, super hardcore. I know that she's just chiding me and just trying to get me to attack because Shizune is like that and she's obviously trying to press the protagonist buttons and make him do something foolish, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. I'm going to attack because I'm always attacking. You know, the best offense or the best defense is a good offense. That's what they say, right? <laughs> she's either really mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose though, so I might as well try something different. Maybe if I spread out my forces and try to control more territories, I can recoup the advantage. Shizune seems to focus on conquering whole nations, so maybe I can sacrifice my hold on continents to gain more small countries. It's worth a shot. A few turns later, I end up losing the game anyway. <laughs> Shizune adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively pump a fist in the air in celebration. I win! I win! Yay! <laughs> There's no need to translate that, it was pretty clear. <laughs> Don't look so sad, Yi-chan. You were really giving it your best. That's what I thought. <laughs> Sometimes your best... <laughs> yeah. Sometimes your best just isn't good enough, though. If anyone knows that, it's me. You did very well for someone who just learned how to play today. <laughs> Yi-chan, you attacked Iceland and North America at the same time. That's a very daring move. Yi-chan is impressed. <laughs> the mark of great people is that they are daring and that they can follow through. You're already halfway there. Isn't that great, Yi-chan? That isn't enough, though. Just potential isn't enough. There is no point to potential if you don't take the first step. There is no point to that if you don't keep going. I want to see more. <laughs> You're right, Shi-chan, but that's so demanding. <laughs> Whoa, she got super close. <laughs> Shizune leans forward, suddenly looking a lot less playful and more like the serious person I expected her to be from the start. Hee-chan, would you like to join the student council? She really doesn't waste any time, does she? But it's only my second day of school, so I'm hesitant about committing to something so early. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet, but spending time with Shizune and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate. I still need more time to think about it before I decide for sure. Maybe I'll get back to you on it. Good thinking, man. Don't rush any decisions. That's crazy talk. Okay, Hee-chan, but I hope you're not just saying that so we don't feel bad. No, really. Really? Hee-chan, if you're going to say that, you're saying that it is definitely the truth and there can't be any mistaking it. I know, I know. I guess I should have my revenge for losing at the very least. <laughs> Shizune smiles at that in a mischievous way that feels like twisting the knife in the wound of my loss. Look at her face. <laughs> 
I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I've spent far longer playing Risk than I expected. Yeah, Risk games take forever. They can take, like, ages. I've had Risk games where, like, we started playing and we left the board where it was, kind of like a chessboard, and come back to it like another day because it, it takes so long. It's a really fun game. If you guys haven't checked it out, honestly, it's, it's so fun. I love it. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Shizune scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall. It should be, unless the librarian's absent. I think you're right, Shichan. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. You can't miss it. Do you want us to show you where it is? No thanks. It's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> Misha's so funny. One flight of stairs up and I run into problems. It's another creepy painting. That's what the problem is. God damn, those are creepy. Those crazy watercolor weird paintings of people. I wonder if these are... I feel bad, though, like, if these are, like, the de the devs of the game. <laughs> Sorry, guys, if it's you. I, I mean, you're very lovely people. <laughs> the second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Wide, of course, and plain, like only hallways can be. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. The classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but then there's a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them, or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bat on the ladder and choose my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either, though, just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means that someone's inside and I can ask for directions no matter how embarrassing that is. I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips, every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider to the school can't be shaken from my mind so, so much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. Whoa. The sound effects in this game are great, but they can sometimes take me off guard because it's like so quiet and then all of a sudden like you'll hear a door open or like uh you know something drop or something it's just you know very surprising to me the door slowly creaks as if groaning from a deep sleep though or though it's much easier to open than i anticipated although to be honest it really adds to the immersion it's like i said there's a lot of great atmosphere in this game it's really well written and it's really well presented leaning over and poking my head i can't read Leaning over and poking my head ever further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek hello on my lips is quickly, quickly snatched away. Oh, it's a white room of whiteness. Oh, hello. Ah, lady. This is not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway staring at the beautiful girl. Evidently, having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes, but doesn't look at me. Hello there. May I help you? Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's the soft, measured voice that- oh good, I gave her the right kind of voice- measured voice that reminds me she's- She's a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, hi, sorry for intruding. I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Um, thanks. I slowly step towards another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That, and the slight cloudiness to her eyes, er, means she must be at least partially blind like Kenji. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamaku. Uh, yeah, I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers. 
ac er, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. One which I hastened to match before realizing the futility of the action. <laughs> Mad dude. <laughs> oh. I'm Lily Sato. Pleased to meet you. Oh, uh, some of you were telling me Lily's the best, so I don't know. We'll have to find out. So, Sao Nakai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out amongst the shelf or along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there, her left hand often lighting, lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to use her long, dainty finger to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problem working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for problems I've never thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of the offer of preparing the drink. So, her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Which room were you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. The school library. Shizune and me, I mean, some classmates told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods, a small metallic tapping coming from the teacup indicating it's being stirred. I'm aware of Miss ha uh, Hakamichi as, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? That's right, in the science room with Mu Muto. She gives a small giggle before setting down the teaspoon and slowly and slowly walking towards the table, teacup and saucer in hand. I love all the little uh, like movements too, all the facial expression changes and posture changes. That's like another really great thing about this one. Seems like there's a lot of different uh, animations and stills and character sprites and things like that. I really, really dig it. Or character portraits, I'm sorry. Obviously there's not any real sprite work in this. It's uh, all very, very beautifully drawn animation and uh, stills. He's quite a character. I imagine you'll come to like him. Most do. Oh, that. so this is me. That's me. Look at me. <laughs> I got a funny little hair that's like... <laughs> As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. Nonetheless, the smell's quite nice. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. I love tea, man. Tea is the best. I drink so much tea every day, it's just, it's part of my, like, daily routine. If I don't get tea, I feel, like, really funky. I, I love it. Thanks, Sato. It tastes really nice. Or Sato? Is, is Sato? Sato? Sato. I think that's how I, I, I don't know. I'm so bad with the Japanese as... <laughs> she smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. Lily, please, there's no need to be too formal. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh well. I guess I should try and talk to and ask her about herself, as it really does seem as if she's catering to me. So, which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third-year classes. Correct. I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, and it's specifically for both blind and partially blind students. I see. Uh, I mean, um, s sorry. I feel like slapping myself for the faux pas. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem in the least bit put off by it. I see. Come on, man. <laughs> Be sensitive. My, my. There's no need to change your speech on my account. Uh, sure. Sorry. I guess I'm really showing my newness here. An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic, I segue into another. Do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. Smooth, dude. <laughs> Thinking on it, this might be your version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as class representative don't leave enough time for an official club, so a friend and I use this room for having tea. 
Class representative, huh? Compared to Shizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Shizune's blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. And with that, guys, I think I'm actually going to end the episode there. Uh, we'll find out more about the clubs from Lily uh, next episode. I really, really dig this game. I like that they introduce characters one at a time. Um, a lot of games where it's sort of like a dating sim style or harem environment, it's like every single girl gets shoved on you or every single guy gets shoved on you all at the same time. And it's really, really hard to get a feel of who they are and what they are before you just sort of embark on a random... Uh, path and a random route and follow a certain person. In this game, they really let you know each person first. As soon as you meet them, you get to sort of delve into the depths of who they are a little bit. And I really, really dig that. This is a very, very well done game. I'm really enjoying it. I hope that you guys are as well. If you are, please be sure to hit the like button, share the video, and favorite it. Also, be sure to subscribe to me if you guys haven't already. For those of you who have, thank you so much for all of your support. You guys are the best in the world. I love every single one of you. And as always, it was great seeing you. Bye bye. Why are you suddenly so fast and weird? Get away! Oh god. Oh god. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. The baby's gross. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay, this isn't so bad though. If we do this, and Fat Fly can, can bop ya. Fat Fly can bop ya. Ah, yeah, take some Fat Fly to the face. Good old dosage of Fat Fly.